Good morning, hope you all had a lovely Christmas. I've got some special gifts here, a few Christmas presents that were left behind that we didn't get around to opening on Christmas Day because it was just so busy, so I thought we could open them now and see what's inside. And if we can help me guess what this one might be. It's a bit soft and squishy. Should we open it up and see what's inside? Let's have a look. Some lovely Christmas socks. They look nice and cosy. I think they might be nice and cosy to wear later on. Right, we've got another present here. It's a bit rattly, can you hear that? Let's open it up, which thing might be in here. It's something exciting. It's always nice when you discover extra presents after Christmas, isn't it? It's a fun last of the season. Mm. Oh, these look good. Yummy chocolates. You can't enjoy those later on. I've got one more present to open. Oh, this one's a little bit bigger. Oh, it's quite hard. Hmm, from the shape of it, I think I might have an idea of what it might be. Let's open it and let's see what's inside. Ooh, lots of hope skeletons in this one. Oh, I thought it might be. It's a book. Oh, 1001 Things to Spot at Christmas. This looks exciting. This might be a nice one to read later on with my family. We'll have to see how many different things we can spot on each page. That looks like a nice book. I'm very excited by all those presents, it's nice to get some extra ones. In today's story, we're going to hear about some people who took some gifts to Jesus, probably not like the gifts I've just been given, something a little bit different. Let's read the story and find out what they were. The King of All Kings Far away in the east, three clever men saw the very same star, the star that God had put in the sky when Jesus was born. They knew it was a sign, a baby king had been born. They had been waiting for this star, they knew it would come. He's here, they shouted, he's here. And I'm sure if you'd been there, you would have heard them laughing and dancing and singing until the sun came up. At dawn, they packed up their camels and wrapped gifts for the baby. They brought their most precious treasures of all, frankincense, gold and myrrh. Special, sparkly, lovely smelling, gleaming things just right for a king. The three wise men, actually, if you'd met them, you'd have thought they were kings because they were so rich and clever and important looking set off. They rode their camels across endless deserts, up steep, steep mountains, down into deep, deep valleys, through raging rivers, over grassy plains, night and day and day and night, for hours that turned into days, that turned into weeks, that turned into months and months, until at last they reached Jerusalem. Jerusalem was by far the most important city for miles around, and as anyone can tell you, that's where a palace would be. And kings are born in palaces. So that's where they went. But they were in for a surprise. They went to see King Herod. Surely he'd know where this baby was. But he didn't. In fact, he didn't like the sound of a new king. It made him cross. He didn't want anyone to be king except him. But Herod's advisers told the three wise men what was written in their books. What God said about the baby king. Go to Bethlehem. That's where you'll find him. Suddenly, the star they had seen in the east started moving again, showing them the way. So the three wise men followed the star out of the big city, along the road, into the little streets of Bethlehem. They followed the star through the streets of Bethlehem, out of the nice part of town, through the not-so-nice part of town, into the really not-nice-at-all part of town, down the little dirt track, until it stopped right over a little house. But wait! It wasn't a palace, and there weren't any guards, or servants, or flags, or red carpets, or trumpets, or anything. Did they get it wrong, or was this what God meant? Sure enough, in that little house, there sitting on his mother's knee, they found him, the baby king. The three men knelt before the little king. They took off their rich royal turbans and gleaming golden crowns. They bowed their noble heads to the ground and gave him their sparkling treasures. The journey that had begun so many centuries before had led three wise men here, to a little town, to a little house, to a little child, to the king God had promised David all those years before. But this child was a new kind of king. Though he was the prince of heaven, he had become poor. Though he was the mighty God, he had become a helpless baby. This king hadn't come to be the boss, he had come to be a servant. Well, as we've heard in our story, the wise men had some really special gifts for baby Jesus. Now, I've got a quick challenge for you. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to look round and see if you can find a really good gift that you could give Jesus. Are you ready? 
One, two, look, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. What did you find? I'm in my kitchen. The nearest and best thing I could see is a bunch of bananas. I'm not sure that's the sort of present that Jesus would want. Luckily, that's not the way we choose to give presents to people usually. I'm sure the wise men thought long and hard before bringing the special gifts they gave to Jesus. Now, there are presents we can give to Jesus. I'm going to read to you from the Bible. I'm reading from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. It says, In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. These are all special gifts that God gives that we can give back to Jesus by showing that we love him and we follow what he teaches. We might not have all of those gifts. There are some on there that I know I find really hard, but there are little things that we can do. If you have a gift for showing kindness, do it gladly. Perhaps when you get back to school, if you see somebody who's lonely or on their own, perhaps you could invite them to join in your game. You can give Jesus the gift of showing kindness to others. If your gift is to serve others, perhaps you could find something around the house that you know needs doing and do it without being asked. That could be a real blessing for the people in your family. What about the ability to be encouraging? Maybe it's just saying to somebody, you did that really well, or perhaps messaging the pastor at church and saying, thank you for preaching on Sunday, I really enjoyed it. Perhaps saying to your teacher at the end of the school day, thank you for teaching me, you teach really well. You can encourage people in lots of different ways. So in just a minute, when I get my things together, we're going to have a think about what, how we can use these gifts that Jesus has given us to give back to him in living our lives the way he wants us to. Right, we are coming to the end of the year and the start of a brand new year in 2021. Something a lot of people do is to make a new year's resolution so that they decide they're going to do much better out this year. And there can be some really good resolutions. You might decide that you're going to remember to keep washing your hands a lot. That would be a good news resolution. You might decide to keep your bedroom tidier. You might decide to do your homework first time without being nagged by mum and dad. There are lots of different things you could do. But I'm going to challenge you to find an extra resolution on top of those good things you already want to get better at. That list we just read in Romans chapter 12, with all those possible gifts, Gifts of prophesying, serving, teaching, encouraging, giving, leading, showing kindness. I challenge you to choose one of those gifts and make that your New Year's resolution this year. I need to work on this too, definitely. I'm going to pick the gift of being encouraging. It's so easy to think, oh, that person did something really well and not tell them. And yet it could be really easy to encourage that person. That's my challenge this year. I want to encourage people and let them know when I see them do something really well. So to help me remember that, I'm going to write a note. So I've got my trusty pen pot. I'm going to write the Bible verse at the bottom. If you want to look it up later, it's Romans chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. And that Bible verse came from Romans chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. And I'm going to write out just the key bit that I've been working on. So for me, that says, if your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. Right, let me just write, I'm going to write encourage in a different colour. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. Right, let's just put a little wavy board around that. Because I like things to look a bit prettier. Now it's up to you how you choose to display this. You might decorate it nicely and put it in a photo frame in your bedroom so you can see it every day. You might choose to do it a bit smaller and put it on your fridge where you'll see it every day. Mine, I've done on a nice big piece of paper. If your gift is to encourage, 
others be encouraging. Romans chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. I'm going to put mine in a special place too. I'm not going to put mine in my fridge or in my bedroom. I'm going to put mine in here. This is my Bible that I use every day. I'm going to fold my resolution up and I'm going to tuck it right in the front of my Bible so that every time I pick my Bible, I think, what's that funny bit of paper sticking out? And I can open it and see my resolution in there. Because it's only by seeing it and remembering about it and praying about it and asking God to help you that we can get these get any better of these. Okay, so see what you can do. Have a think, pick one of those gifts and see if you can challenge yourself to serve Jesus with one of those gifts this year. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.